said, I make you go up out of Egypt and brought you to the land which I swear to your fathers. And I said, I will never break my covenant with you. And you shall make no league with the inhabitants of this land. You shall throw down their altars, but you have not obeyed my voice. Why have you done this? Wherefore I also said, I will not drive them out from before you, but they shall be as thorns in your sides, and their gods shall be a snare to you. It came to pass when the angel of the Lord spake these words to all the children of Israel, that the people lifted up their voice and wept. And they called the name of that place Bohem, and they sacrificed there to the Lord. When Joshua let the people go, the children of Israel went every man unto his inheritance to possess the land. And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. And Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died being a hundred and ten years old. And they buried him in the border of his inheritance in Tamthrees, and the Mount of Ephraim, on the north side of the hill of Gash. And also all that generation were gathered unto their fathers, and there arose another generation after them, which knew not the Lord, nor yet the works which he had done for Israel. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and served Balaam. They forsook the Lord God their fathers, who brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, the gods of the people that were round about them, and bowed themselves unto them, and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, and served Baal and Ashtoreth. We're glad of God tonight. I don't take my time with the Lord, but help me. Praise the Lord. And see, my cause ain't long. I felt troubled in my soul, troubled in my spirit. I uh, thought we'd tell the wife we'd been so much trouble. She kind of worried about my body, and I told her it's not my body, but I'm troubled in spirit tonight. I'm troubled in spirit. Glory to God. I thought I, I'm, I'm glad that I've got a God that will talk to me, and that will deal with me, and that will let me know things. If you got a God tonight that never talks to you, you've got the wrong God. Amen. 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 If you got a spirit tonight that won't warn you of trouble, you've got the wrong spirit. Amen. Praise the Lord. I come to talk to you, whosoever will. I come to talk to you if you'll listen to me. Glory to God. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. I thought we'd travel, Brother Mark. There's trouble in the land like they never have been in the time of, of, of our people that our people have never seen. I, I thought I began to read that this evening. I thought you talked about the people that were blessed. Uh, some of them came up and uh, as children they knew Moses and they, they knew what Aaron looked like. And I thought as time went on they, they were there as little children and maybe saw the miracles uh, that God had done. And, I thought maybe because uh, some of the elders that had sinned, uh, God, uh, instead of letting them go on into the land, uh, He kept them out in the wilderness of sin until the, the elders of them above 20 years of age had perished from among the people. But I thought there was those from uh, 20 and under that was there that remembered the things that God had done. I thought as long as Joshua was with the people and the elders were with the people, uh, they were the ones that kept the people praying. They were the ones that kept the people close to the Lord, that, that held on to the laws of God and bore witness of the things of God. And I thought they knew the Word. Uh, they knew the law that was given to them. Uh, they knew what, it, uh, what the manna tasted like. They knew what the Red Sea looked like when it was piled up on top of waters, on top of water. They knew what it was like. Oh, when the river was parted and they walked to the river, oh, they were there when they placed the twelve stones and made them a memorial of that in time pack oh, down the line when they would come along and say what me at these stones, they would be a testimony unto their children that they would tell their children about the God that brought them out. Oh, they would tell their children about the great God and the memorial. And I promise soon to the end, stay up and help me with that. God had told them not to do. Amen, Lord. Glory, glory, Lord. 
Thank God. I told you I said it in the house. And I was reading this, so we're going to think how. How was it that there came along a generation that didn't know the Lord? All these elders had experienced these things. They'd seen the power of God. They'd seen the mighty hand of God move. How is it that they come along a generation that didn't know? I'm going to tell you tonight how it come along. Somebody failed to tell the generation that was coming up behind them. Somebody, praise the Lord. Somebody might be saying, well, they're young. Just love them. Be good to them. Uh, they hurt the law. Uh, don't judge nobody. Don't put no one. Don't want to hurt nobody. And they loved them until they come along and had no idea who God even was. And they didn't have no idea of the laws of God anymore because somebody had failed to talk and do the thing that God had told them to do. <laughs> so the children paid for it. They pay for it. To grandma and grandpa. Well, it's just a younger generation. You know how these young people are. It might be a young generation coming on, but it's an ancient God that we're serving. It's the eternal God that we're living for. If we're living for Him. If we live for Him. I come to preach to you tonight. I come to tell whoever want to listen to me. I can't talk to you. Glory to God. Uh, you look around and you say, Brother Jesse, we're doing good. We're doing good. We're here at the church. We've been doing a lot better. A little bump comes along. People scatter, you know. Like a flock of birds, they run away. And then maybe they come right back and get later. That ain't what I'm talking about. Glory to God. We live in a day and a time and age when the old things that the Spirit of God taught our people and taught our elders. We like to get the names out. We like to battle around that we know that we knew this one and we knew that man. We knew that old saint of God. We was there when they done this and that. We like to talk about that. Glory to God. And the thing that we one time testified to, suddenly now, at the end of this age, our people are backing off of the teaching of the Spirit of God. Suddenly they're laying down for the thing that God has taught us the cleanliness before the Lord, the sanctification, and the serious sanctification before the Lord. If you want the Holy Ghost to move on you, you still have to be sanctified. Help him God. I'm going to dwell on him tonight. But don't worry about me, it's the root of the branch of David. And he won't break with me. These that can live like the devil and have a spirit move on, but it's because what I'm saying. It's the devil moving on. Amen. 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 I said it's the devil moving on. Amen. Glory to God. What kind of God do we serve that come and teach us one way and then go down the road and teach somebody else another way? Pray the Lord. Pray the Lord. You know who gets in the way? Man gets in the way. Oh, I've seen them stand on a solid rock. I've seen them preach it to others. And then when it come home to them, then it come home to their children, suddenly they've seen a new light. Suddenly, oh, that's just the old way. And we don't have to do that way no more. But I've come to tell you tonight, oh, that old path is still the right way. Oh, that old word of God has never been changed. The Holy Ghost has not come down at the end of the world to change what is written in the word of God. Now. Amen. 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 Preacher. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible began to say, My people's gone into captivity. Remember last night I was preaching about staying out of bondage, being careful, watch out for the traps the devil's got. Yeah. And here we read tonight, the Lord said, My people are gone into captivity because they have no knowledge. The wrong will men starved out. The multitude just dried up with thirst for spirit. They're dying, they're starving out. He said, therefore hell hath enlarged herself. When you go read in the book of Revelation, you will find the exact measurements of the city of God. No matter how many times you hunt it down and you reference it out, the measurements have not changed in 2,000 years. The city has gotten no bigger and it's gotten no smaller. And it's going to be heaven when we get there. But every day, hell enlarges herself. Boy, it ain't because the blood is failing. It's not because the cross was in vain. It's because there's a generation coming along now that have not been taught to fear sin, have not been taught to flee from unrighteousness, have not been taught to eschew evil, avoid 
evil. Do that which is good. But we are to feel good. Must be a good generation. If it feels alright, it must be alright. But if the word of God stands against it, it don't matter. If the pastor does it, it still don't make him right. Church for the day, there's a lot of law, a 
about death or life and vomit. Amen. That's true. There's a lot of swine that's wallowing in the mire. They've been washed. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Where did the old white-headed men of God go? They told us to come here out from among them and eat you separate, says God. Where did they go to? You know why they don't preach it now? Because they're going to love it. Amen. You know why they don't preach against it? They're doing it. I said they're doing it. And then they come in. Oh, you ever hear love, love, love? This little story, that little story. Some funny little joke. Some little anecdote along the way. Come back to me. 
Then there arose a generation which knew not the Lord. Whose fault is it that they don't know Him? Whose fault is it that they don't know Oh, preacher, I tried to raise my kids right. That's good. That's good. But they get hooked up with the wrong thing. You better not justify what they're doing. Right. They get hooked up with the wrong spirit. You better not sit her and amen and go along with it because you're going to have blood on your hands. Yeah. It's one thing for me as a man of God. If I stand before the Lord one day and have blood on my hand, that's sad enough. But what would it be like to stand and to look in the blood that's on my hands if the blood of my own children that I fed the Lord and tell them that there is yet a God in Israel. There is yet a truth and a living God. There is still a holy God, a righteous God that has set forth His way and told us to live it. And son or daughter, if you want the real thing, you have to live in a way that the real thing of God will move on you. Amen. Amen. You look around all the confusion that's moving. Oh. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I preached and told you last night God's a spirit. That's what Jesus, His Son, said. God's a spirit. They that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. I'm going to tell you tonight, Satan is a spirit too. I feel it came closer. <laughs> the old standards are hopeless. We've been pretty stupid. We're right. <laughs> we begin to back up off them. We begin to live another way. And worse of all, deny them. Right. <laughs> I thought years ago as a young fellow wanted to hold me in here at the church. My little camp. They kept bringing a use to me. They kept bringing the servants with them. And I ain't gonna probably got some here tonight, Lord. Come on, we're just help me, God. Mama said to her, night after night I kept feeling that friend of mine begin to bid my heart. You tell them unless I bid them to bring them leave at the house. That person. You hear me? That one particular one. I kept feeling that. To find me, I got up before service and I told him. I said, if God moves on you to bring them, bring them. I said, if He don't move on you to bring them, I prefer you just to leave them at home. Amen. I bore a whooping on the back from some of my own people. Up and out the door. They wanted to talk to Daisy. Wasn't too far down the road, mother. At that same one. Begin to take the boxes and pile them up and burn them. And begin to turn and preach that it wasn't God that was in it. That that wasn't right. And I said, thank you, Holy Ghost. Don't, I don't need a man coming here just trying to be like us. I need a man coming here that is one of us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And God knew what was in His heart. He just hadn't come out yet. And I'm still here tonight and He's Twice dead, plucked up all roots. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. I said, thank God for the Holy Ghost. Thank God for so foolishness that's moving out of the churches today where they live like the devil, act like Jezebel, adulterers and fornicators, and they come on and do whatever. Hello, hello. I said, hello. I come back to Jesus.
that have left and begin to go my way. I won't go to hell. Let me tell you, you stop obeying the Lord. You put your hands in sin. You mix them in. You receive another spirit. You'll be in hell just like the one that never did know the Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. Are you living it tonight, children? I begin, I begin to look at it. When I tell you about it, I begin to see. Well, I'm just, you, you and I were so nice. You were like, listen, we was taught for years for the sisters don't cut your hair. Amen. They told us brothers, clean up. Amen. You should have good hair cutting look like me. Amen. Get that pride off your face. Come on, we step down. The clean say a man is a sign of humility before Amen. God. Reading in the word of God. Amen. When they humble themselves, they say. Praise the Lord. We was taught, you women, you dress like men. Amen. You men, you dress like men. Glory. We're taught to dress decently. Don't look like, don't put on prayer preachers and look like it was painted on you. Don't put on, you may have a dress on, but if we can see the line that your undergarments, your clothes are too tight. Come along, we'll cross something. 
you know, when people do is all just as good as a prophecy. Woo, that was good, brother. Brother, sister, that was good. Oh, that just edified me. I tell you, glory, 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 for Psalm 19, Luke, you. You need to get rid of what moves on you to get me on and find that true son to find the Holy Ghost and God out of heaven that'll call a solid out for what it is. Well, 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 well. 
I'm glad we got this evening. I'm glad of His mercy and His grace. But don't you forget this. When you lay down at night, hell is on our trail. Uh, you lay down, you can't say that, Lord, I've tried to please you today. Lord, I've tried to lay aside everything that I feel that you want me to do. Lay aside. I've tried to obey you. I've tried to mind you. This day, Lord, I've lived my life for you. And if not, remember, hell is on our trail. People won't, some people won't have us, but do you know there's young people in hell? When you know something is wrong to do, and you do it, you have seen it. And hell is on your trail. Hey, old folks, if we do something that we know is wrong to do, then we have sinned. And hell is on our trail. Jesus told us of a man one time that one time was a rich man. He fired sumptuously every day. He had the finest apparel. Colors for a king, expensive. Yeah. Service to bring him everything that he wanted. He also had available to him Moses and the prophets. But them he didn't want. Them he didn't want to keep. There was a little old beggar man that laid outside his gate of no doubt his fine, lavish home. Full of sores. Dirty. Where'd the sores come from? Dirty. Smelled bad. Rough looking outfit. Jesus said that he desired, didn't say God. He desired the crumbs that fell from that rich man's table. He may as been so hungry. Somebody eat on a, on a chicken leg, throw it out in the garbage, and you're willing to dig through the garbage and grab that bone and suck the marrow out of it if you could have it. Jesus said, What? Lazarus died. And the angels came and carried him to the Abraham. Praise the Lord. But then he said, and the rich man also died and was buried. And in hell he lifted up his eyes, being in torments. And looking afar off, he saw Lazarus comforted in Abraham's room. And he began to cry, Father Abraham. Send Lazarus that he may dip his finger in water and cool my tongue. He said, For I am tormented in this flame. Well, 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 well. Two thousand years since the Lord, around the time that the Lord told about that rich man. And the last report I got of that man that one time had been rich, he'd gone from a prince to a beggar. He wasn't begging for food. He wasn't begging for silver and gold. He didn't want his fine apparel. But he was begging for one drop of water. Why? Because every day that he parted and lived it up, hell was on his trail. That every day he walked by that beggar man and looked and paid him no mind and went on his way. He didn't realize that hell was on his trail. You might have come tonight. I won't tell you one thing. I don't need to talk to nobody to get a message from anybody. I talked to God and God moved so me. But I'm ready what God give me. I won't tell you tonight. You may not have felt that he trusted.
a magnet for that one drop of water. He never got his water. Still hasn't got his water. Still hasn't received that water. He said, oh, I love seeing Lazarus back and go and warn my five brothers. Go and warn, let it go, Lord, that they not come to this awful place. Go and tell my people, warn my people. Got Moses and the prophets. Oh, Father Abraham, but if one rose from the dead, he ought to hear. And he began to tell me if they hear, not Moses and the prophets, neither will they hear. No one rose from the dead. You know how true that is? Because there's one that rose from the dead. Amen. And they still won't hear him. They still won't listen to him. They still won't. I hear people talk about what well, my place Jesus said that in my father's house so many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. He said, but I'm going to prepare a place for you. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, glory, glory. I hear people talk about wanting to go to that place, but I want to tell you tonight, if your name ain't in that book, if you ain't living for God, if your heart ain't not before God, oh, there is another place that's prepared for you, and you don't want Just a little down the road, heart attack. Yeah. Yeah. But God had mercy and brought them back. They died. God brought them back. And then He comes to me and says, I remembered when you told me it was just a heartbeat away. 
I'm going to tell you in a natural one breath away. One heart away. Hey, saints of God, look up. You're one heartbeat away from eternal rest. You hear, you know, Lord, look up, Rose. You're one heartbeat away from eternal peace. But if you're here tonight and you don't know the Lord, there arose a generation that did not know the Lord. You're here tonight, the worst case. Worse than not knowing the Lord. You're here tonight and you knew Him. And you turned from Him. Hell is on your trail. Oh, it's just a coincidence I'm here preaching. No, it's not. It is the hand of a loving God. Amen. That is reached down. Try to pluck you from the flames that are on your trail. Try to deliver you from that place where the worm died not, the soul of man won't die. Come where the fire shall never be quenched. Well, how do you feel about it? I'm going to tell you. I've said it places and services at times I hope people talk about a great conviction. And I never felt a drop. And I want to tell you tonight. If you take it from a man, you say that man don't know me. Your old friends come by tonight to take you back. There might be people that look at you wouldn't have you. But this man will take you back. Preacher, you mean after all that I've done this? I stood at the bedside. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. One of my own brothers dying, cancer taking him. I've never seen him cry in my life until I sat there with him that day in tears. Begin to run down his face. And we're not Catholic. You don't confess to me. You go and you confess to the Savior. And he began to tell me things that he had done. Great things, wicked things that he had done. He said, I guess I'll have to pay for that. I said, no. I said, the Lord will forgive you for that. He'd tell me something else that was even worse. He said, I guess I'm going to have to pay for that. I said, no. He'll forgive you for even that. <laughs> then he got down to, I guess, one of the greatest sins that you could do, aside from blasphemy. My big brother, first time I've ever seen him cry. He told me what he did. He said, don't nobody know about it. But he told me, and you're not going to know about it because I'm not going to tell you. Right. But I felt a confidence wrong. And you may sound odd to you, but that day I sat there and every time he'd tell me something, I, my faith in God grew greater and greater. My faith in the grace of God, my understanding of mercies of God got greater and greater. The deeper the sin went. And I with confidence could look at that brother and I give you even for that Amen. without a doubt in my heart. Amen. When he got ready to go, we began to call him and wanted to pray. He wanted somebody to pray with him. A deathbed repentance. You're here tonight, you're healthy. You need to pray now. But a deathbed repentance, if you're on your deathbed, repent. I've heard people say, ain't no good. I ain't going to tell you that. I know. I read him a man was a thief. He was a felon. And there was three nails and one breath between him and hell. And he looked over to the Son of God. And he said, Remember me. Remember me. He could 
can't go get baptized. He can't go find a rabbi. But I tell you who he found. He found the Son of the living God. They say the blood hadn't been shed. I made the difference. He hadn't been bled. All the way from, all the, way from the judgment hall. Oh, God, God, down on the cross. Down his face. Down his shoulder. Down to his feet. Dripping off his toes and his hands. still has the power to forgive and to save and to deliver. I said He still has the power. Hey, we glad He's got the power. Brothers, it is up to me. We've been destroyed all the time. But isn't it good that the King of glory is the one that can look and say tonight, I forgive you of everything you've ever done. Would you like to pray? Would you like to pray? Would you like to pray? I know that people tell you to pray the time you want to, I'm going to tell you you can't. You can try, but it's only... See, Christ is the mediator between us and the Father. That's why He's seated at the right hand of God. And He ever maketh intercession for me and you. He's the propitiation for our sins. He's the atoning sacrifice for when we've done wrong. Well, praise the Lord. Well, boy. Get ready. God will not make anybody serve Him. Do you know why you're here? Somebody wants to come home. Somebody wants to see they want to come home. You joined up with a stranger in a strange country and found yourself down in the hog pen of sin, destitute. And you begin to remember that back in the Father's house, His servants had bread enough and to spare. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to go back to my Father. And I'm going to say, Father, I sent him as him. He's doing no more work. He can't do something. Just make me one of the higher servants. He already had it rehearsed what he was going to say. Go to the Bible said. What Jesus said. We 
when that sun was yet a far way off, coming up that road. That little daddy that he missed so much, no doubt must have went out every day because Father was looking down the road. Is today the day my boy is coming home? This day, Father began to look. Glory to God. No matter how many children you have, they all have their own walk. They all have their own voice, their own ways about them, and you know them when you see them. While they was yet afar off, the Father recognized that walk. That's my boy. He didn't have to come to him. What happened? The Father ran to him, fell upon him, and kissed his neck. And he started to go through the rehearsal. You know that Father? Draw them in. Glory to God. He put a ring on his hand. He restored him the authority as his son. Called for a new robe for him. New shoes upon him. And said, Go and kill the fatted calf. My son is dead. Well, well, well. Hell is on your trail. Seem to me like it's time to pray. Sing that song. This altar is open. Those that are able, you're welcome to stand and we open the altar. You're here tonight. You need to answer that call. You can make your way to the Father. Make your way. Come and tell the Lord, I don't want to go to hell. I don't want to go to that place. Glory to God, sing that song. 